Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I am with Minakshi Lekhi, Minister of State for External Affairs and Culture, Government of India, for a special interview on the eve of Azadi Ke Amrit Mahotsav, India at 75, and ongoing Atmanirbhar Bharat initiatives. Ma'am, welcome to ET Government. Thank you very much for having me. My first question: India is celebrating Azadi Ke Mahotsav. All the ministers across the country uh, announcing their best practices, innovations, and technology initiatives. Can you just tell us what's going on on the status of the celebrations in terms of uh, since Ministry of Culture is a nodal agency? So Ministry of Culture is nodal agency and we are completing 75 years of India's independence. So Prime Minister Modi announced it last year, to, uh, 2021, that uh, we must celebrate uh, Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav, 75 years of India's independence and the time from here on to the centenary completion, the next 25 years, are going to be very relevant for India's history and India's existence on the globe. And that time will be called Amrit Kal. Uh, the idea behind Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav is that for about 1,000 years, uh, we've been invaded repeatedly by people, we've been exploited, and there has been a long-standing struggle which has gone on for a very long time. We are the oldest civilization in the world. People know very little about us. And uh, the, the space and the place which India needs to occupy in the thoughts, in the minds of people, hasn't happened. The other aspect is that when a country like India, which has been a benevolent power, so through the history, if you look at our history, we've been benevolent. We've, we've never tried to take over other people or we've never tried to disturb equilibriums or uh, try to harm. And whenever we've been powerful, we've only been a good force to reckon with because we've always tried to help others. We've been on the right side of the history. Humanity's been major concern of us but unfortunate part is we've never been given our due also another important development what we see is that india stood by thousands of uh, indians who stranded in ukraine war zone and uh, again your ministry ministry of external affairs undertook the project ganga evacuating those families and including the students bringing them back to the india and uh, stood by them what is the latest on that? I mean, so the latest is that we were going through a very, very difficult situation where the world was extremely polarized. Uh, we are friends with both countries, and worse, that a very large number of our people, and especially youngsters, were stranded. Twenty-two thousand plus people in a war zone. So, extracting them was an issue for which a whole lot of effort was put in. And uh, the best part is the uh, countries on the border of Ukraine, say Poland and Romania and Slovakia and uh, um, Moldova, uh, were the bordering countries. Thus, we needed their support to evacuate our people. We needed to use their land routes. We needed to use their airstrips. We needed a different kind of coordination, uh, uh, a diplomacy of a different level where we are on the side of the right. And at the same time, we do not, we keep a balance and we keep our national interest also are given due importance. So diplomatically, it, it is not an easy spot to be in. And humanly, it's not an easy spot when you have to evacuate 22,000 people from a country which is a war zone. Uh, I can, through you, send a message to all Indians that Prime Minister personally took interest in this aspect, effort, and I would say, extremely coordinated efforts is what went around the entire ministry. Ministry, uh, Different ministries also pitched in, whether it was uh, civil aviation or others, 
to give the confidence to people that Indians are battling it out as one nation, as one people, and government as a whole has approached the subject and is working towards it. Many of our ministers were also sent to those countries to, uh, you know, augment the effort. And uh, all this, I think, uh, has had a, a very positive impact across the nation. Uh, and, and also globally, we have shown our uh, strength that when you talk of numbers, I know of some uh, highly developed countries whose numbers of evacuee was about 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 max of 800 people, 700. It's not to, it's just to give a perspective of the enormity of situation. So enormity of situation is these numbers with people who have resources versus us who are struggling with resources post pandemic. 22,000 people to be evacuated from different states, all kind of logistic management and with uh, a very limited number of people on the ground, but everyone put in their best and we were successful. So my gratitude to the ones who were on the ground, who were working hard, the officers and others, and of course the people who were who were behind the scenes operating all this. And, and Operation Ganga has been a huge, huge, huge success and has given confidence to Indians that yes, the government is with us and the government which is unseen, unthought, is behind the, not just behind the scenes, but on the ground to sort out things. Ma'am, a couple of interesting questions which I would like to share with you. India endorses a, a common understanding of the how international law applies to the state and the use of technology is a vital for promoting an open and secure environment. I just want to ask you, is India leading a discussion on the international cybersecurity and its applicability in the global scenario? Your views on that? So we are in touch with uh, various countries. We've already had uh, deeper understanding and deeper discussions with uh, uh, 12 odd countries. We have a separate uh, cyber uh, secure, uh, cyber diplomacy division and the job of the division is to encourage discussions on this subject to participate in conferences to build a certain uh, common platform for everyone and uh, you've touched upon a very important aspect and that is open transparent and secure uh, uh, internet space or cyberspace. So for, for making it open, transparent and uh, yet secure has been a challenge. The biggest challenge, uh, uh, the internet space or the cyberspace uh, offers is to the sovereignty. And the reason being the geographical boundaries which the nation states recognize, the cyberspace does not recognize one to the understanding of sovereignty for each country could be different. Governance structures of each country are very different. And uh, the technological control over the systems uh, in terms of equipment, etc., is very different. The, the cyber security will always have, a, or cyber, cyberspace will always have an element of software and which again will vary. So these variations need to be understood globally and global order needs to work towards all this. So I'll say while there are many discussions, while there's many conversations and uh, we are in deep discussions with many countries and yet the sovereignty aspect is still a challenge both in understanding and in execution. That's where the collaborative effort needs to come from various stakeholders and everyone needs to have more focused discussion, discussions on these subjects. And we are, we, are, we are definitely working towards it. Like 
like in many areas we've shown our leadership whether it was managing covid is um, operation ganga or whatever else we india's taken the lead and has shown the world uh, that alternates do exist and we must work on alternative thinking i'm sure in even in cyber diplomacy similar efforts are going on and results also in near future will come can you tell us uh, about the india cyber diplomacy strategy one of the initiatives that you have taken after taking over this ministry and the cyber uh, diplomacy division you have started what's the mandate so again as i said in my previous uh, answer i would just elaborate upon it that the ict for example communication technologies today that uh, Uh, strict barriers do not exist in any form it's it's very fluid and with the fluidity the the cultural aspect the communication aspect the security and diplomacy aspect all need to be handled together and uh, all are interlinked so cyber diplomacy is not just about some uh, big cyber space it has implications for national security and in the implications of that for national security the the element completely changes and since the element changes that's how the management needs to happen and for that management the the working space interaction and both uh, at multilateral and bilateral forums we need to work on so we we've had uh, some very important discussions around it and the best is that uh, again going back to um, the the digital um, uh, india program which uh, uh, pm initiated and we we really we are one of the largest consumers of data we are largest uh, database in terms of people who are using telephony uh, and thus we are a big market but beyond market we are people we are a sovereign nation and uh, uh, whether it's um, localization of data or it's uh, securing the data uh, cyber security is very important element of all that and prime minister modi again has been very vocal about digital india and in terms of global cyber uh, security index we were at number 47 in 2020 and post that now we have achieved number 10 position and in asia pacific we are number 4 so we've made progress we have made improvements we are working towards it and um, uh, we're dealing both at uh, multilateral and bilateral for us in fact i remember when um, prime minister kishida of japan was visiting india so he also mentioned that the collaborations have to be about ai about um, uh, uh, strategic technologies about cyber diplomacy about cyber security safety networks so i think india is on the right track except we need to um, we need to augment every day build ourselves and take uh, steps forward so in terms of extradition uh, mea is again uh, an odd agency uh, india has signed a few mous with some countries and some arrangements especially with some country other countries what has been the experience of india's i mean in the if you look at last few years uh, the extradition experience with the these uh, partners countries so it's been mixed because our treaties were uh, at times um, there were some gaps but we we Uh, invented and worked on those subjects we are still it's work in progress so i think we have uh, extradition treaties with about 50 odd countries and uh, we have extradition arrangements with several other countries uh, recently we've had uh, extradition treaties the new ones which we have signed is last eight years also lithuania uh, afghanistan malawi and uh, morocco we've signed uh, extradition treaties with them we've also entered into extradition arrangement with uh, uh, new zealand as one and uh, 
another country. We've, we've entered into uh, 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 arrangements of uh, extradition. So we are constantly working and the success has been there. Like I remember that this person, Ravi Pujari, Sanjeev Kapoor and the other Sanjeev, which was uh, Buki, uh, and then um, uh, uh, Christian Michael James on, of Augusta Westland fame. Uh, they have been extradited to India and we have been successful while some of work uh, we, it's a constant, uh, it's a it's a constant work which we are engaging in, and uh, we work very seriously on these subjects. And reason is again, um, on in terms of extradition, I must remind you that uh, G20 meeting in 2018, Prime Minister uh, Modi intervened, and he did say that United Nations conventions on um, corruption and United Nations Convention on uh, transnational crimes need to be implemented fully and completely. So there are gaps in implementation process. And India is of the opinion that whatever we write has to be implemented completely. And only when everyone across the globe learns to uh, or practices um, uh, what we normally sign, these things can be taken charge of. So India's stand is very clear that we want law enforcement to be more complete and we want uh, everyone to recognize these issues as serious issues because uh, these issues implement, uh, uh, these issues Im Im uh, impact uh, a country's sovereignty, national issues, and again, for global good, for global good, it's important that uh, everyone thinks alike and works together. So, if UN has come to certain decisions in terms of conventions and all, everybody else needs to follow also. And another interesting development. In 2020 January, External Affairs Ministry announced the new emerging and uh, strategic technologies nest division what has been the experience of the division so far what its primary mandate so uh, the primary mandate of uh, uh, nest division is as the name suggests new emerging strategic technologies so in today's changing world we all talk about industrial revolution to industrial four number four revolution so this is all about technology. This is about um, uh, the changing uh, global scenario. And for changing global scenario, it becomes imperative that it's technology which is changing all of us. So the entire relationship international within nations, uh, the, the manner in which the human civilization is going to go further, Technology will play a very, very important role. And when technology will play its important role, the new emerging strategic technology will have their own role. Uh, but we are not just focusing on, uh, I mean, uh, this division as we have set up uh, uh, a division dealing with this shows India's focus on uh, technology partnerships. Thus we give a lot of emphasis to technology sharing and working. Uh, but in terms of uh, uh, strategic partnership, India has got many other partnerships which are technology related. Uh, for example, uh, in terms of uh, AI and uh, communication technology, uh, we, we've got uh, partnerships with uh, Germany, uh, with uh, uh, Japan, uh, several countries which we are working with. For example, on energy sector, on renewable energy specifically, we have partnerships with Australia where we are working with them on solar and uh, uh, less expensive hydrogen technology. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a combination of goodie bag which has got multiplicity of partnerships from 
many other countries, uh, whether with UK we have uh, two uh, developmental innovation uh, partnerships. So with, with several countries, we have different, different kind of partnerships um, or, or in terms of innovation technology and using technology uh, to answer the problems which mankind is faced with and to find solutions. For example, achieving SDGs. Now, you can't achieve SDGs without appropriate use of technology, which deals with uh, issues and challenges pertaining to that sector. Whether it's in terms of analyzing data or finding solutions, both ways, uh, the technology will have its role to play. So uh, for global good and in terms of saying that what we as country believe in, our policies uh, for thousand years, a COVID app. So when we had to vaccinate people, there had to be a technological solution to that because we are 130 million people. How do you keep a track? How do you feel which is the next date when you complete the fourth, uh, um, four months or two months or when is your next date going to be? When should you go to the uh, center? Whether people in particular location have been uh, vaccinated or not, how do the real numbers match uh, the ground? So we needed a technological solution and the solution was in COVID app. India created COVID app, dealt with it. India created uh, co-vaccine and COVID shield and protected its people. But once we achieved optimal target, we'd done well and it's an open source app. And we also disclosed it to the people and we told them that those who uh, cannot afford to make or do not have the capability are free to use this app for their purpose. Now, what can be greater good than this? You know, millions of dollars and billions will get spent on creating something like this. Now, India, as I initially said, and I re repeat myself, that uh, we are a good benefit, uh, beneficial uh, people, you know. If we, if we do well, if India does well, it only helps the world. It's, it's not a negative force. So we are benevolent force. So if we have made the app, it's available to all. If we've made the vaccine, we are giving it to all. If we made hydroxychloroquine available, it was available for all. So whatever we did was for global good also, apart from, of course, meeting our own requirements for, for every nation state, that remains a priority, every nation state. And especially when we have challenging numbers like 130 million people, how do you deal with that large number? Optimizing resource is as important. And uh, we, show to the world that you can actually optimize resources without um, being um, exploitative. You can be a force, a good force to reckon with and a global good is what you believe in. And that's the purpose of NEST and uh, such agencies to work with other agencies to to develop and apply technology for finding solutions, uh, for creating force for global good. And we have strength. We have, we have huge strength in this area. In fact, there is a, there is a report by the Ministry of External, the, the Parliamentary Committee on Ministry of External Affairs, which has given a report on emerging technologies, extradition, and uh, um, uh, other issues. In, in that report, they have specifically mentioned that India should leverage its strength in technology and um, leverage uh, the positioning. So I think we are precisely applying it, implementing it. Any takers for COVAXIN, uh, sorry, COVID apl application? Uh, ministry has extended, uh, uh, welcomed uh, other neighboring countries to Many. come. Many. The deployment Many. in terms of deployment. Yes, yes, absolutely. Whole lot of them. Uh, Covaxin, uh, no, Covin app, a Covin app also. Many countries asked for it. We've given it. 
We made it open. It's, it's open source and we, we welcomed it. We said those who cannot uh, build an app of their own, free to use, please. My, my last question. Uh, we hear that India is working on the external technology policy. Is there, is there any such uh, thing happening from the Ministry of External Affairs that India is working on uh, the external technology policy? See, external, internal technology policy got to be there in place for the simple reason. Uh, there will be people who probably are better than us in certain fields. Uh, so we need collaborations. There are spaces and places where we are better than others. So others will need our support. Uh, when it comes to global good and finding solutions to problems which are faced by humanity, this to and fro mechanisms of uh, ideas of technology is bound to be the basis of our relationship. So we've entered into many collaborations with uh, many countries um, across uh, the world. And uh, UAE, we entered into a collaboration in terms of AI and technology very recently, just last week. Japan has been a long-standing friend of India. Russia, we have long-standing technology transfer policy with them. So uh, uh, this will be... Uh, uh, this will be a constant uh, paradigm where a lot of countries will use us and our ability and capability, and we will be seeking help from other countries. With US and Israel, we have a trilateral uh, relationship. And in that trilateral relationship, it has got even elements of defense technology and strategic technologies also. They are our trusted partners in many fields. So the approach, again, has to be whether it's external technology policy or internal mechanisms. They have to work in tandem and they can't be at cross purposes with each other. And uh, like any other collaboration, technology is also going to be aware. We, a lot of people dealt in spices, today you deal in technology. And uh, that's what international collaborations are all about. So in reaching out to people during this Azadi Kamrit Mahasav, science and technology element and the strength of India needs to be pitched higher, along with the fact that whether it's smelting of iron, it's building of non-corrosive iron pillars, or Arya Bhats of this country, value of pi uh, to discovery of zero. This country has given a lot to science and technology and that needs to be showcased as well. Ma'am, as we started financial year, April 1st, for the country, uh, what are your priorities from the MEA and the Culture Ministry? So, uh, the financial year, uh, the priorities will be uh, we, we've got many projects online, Vibrant Villages is one, uh, reaching out for cultural methodologies is other. Uh, so uh, a, a, an, a very strong element of cultural diplomacy to cultural economy also is going to be seen and a lot of people have to participate in that preservation and uh, heritage. Uh, is also got very strong elements of uh, economy and diplomacy. Uh, so we need to combine those efforts. In addition to, of course, technology, business as usual, the trade, the commerce, uh, those elements have to be added. But Atnirbhar Bharat will have more and more and more participation, and that should remain the focus. This is a special interview between actually Lekhi, Minister of State for External Affairs and Culture, Government of India. Ma'am, thank you very much for uh, talking to ET Government and sharing your deep insights on the issues pertaining to the External Affairs Ministry and Culture Ministry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.